Hi everyone, welcome to my review of Stanley Kubrick's The Killing in 1956. Here it is on Blu-ray, it actually comes with Killer's Kiss as well, and yes, we are here with the pretty much the, the first um, main Kubrick film. Um, you know, of course he made Killer's Kiss, Fear and Desire before this, but I'm, I don't really count them um, among his stuff. Um, you know, and this was his, the film that he considered um, his first mature film. I will be reviewing them, uh, certainly uh, Killer's Kiss and including that in the ranking. But, you know, in order I'm doing, um, you know, it'll be starting with this and, you know, within that, you know, kind of um, series, it'll probably be about almost three months because I plan to do it, um, or two and a half months, I plan to do one every week, um, you know, and, and at times I'll probably be doing um, one every two weeks. Um, and, and it's also two films where I kind of want to watch in quick succession um, among his filmography. And yes, um, basically this is the first sort of, um, you know, one that was... He considered his first uh, mature film, and um, yeah, this film, um, you know, I watched it first in 2016, um, and actually, this is the first film um, that I've watched this year. I wanted to try and make that, you know, um, a film that, you know, was significant, um, or at least uh, in many, in different ways, you know, I think because this is uh, from my favourite director, um, who I consider the greatest director, um, it, it's significant enough to be the, the first film of the year. Um, I try and make it, you know, an amazing film, um, and... Yeah, it's the first one of 2019, so it's really, really great. And, you know, what better way to do it um, than start with Kubrick um, and this series, the one that really I've been looking forward to the most. Um, now, this film I first saw in 2016. Um, it was after, you know, his big, big films that I'd seen. Um, you know, and of course, I, as a kid, I'd seen Spartacus, um, you know, Full Metal Jacket and The Shining many, many times. Um, and, and this is the one I saw after Clockwork Orange, Barry Lyndon in 2001. And even, I believe, um, after Eyes Wide Shut, um, you know, I think this is one of the last ones that I saw, um, you know, for the first time. Um, and yes, it's not one that I was thinking, oh, this is going to probably be a, a masterpiece, um, you know, and because one, it's not to be talked about. And, um, you know, two, it, it, I mean, not much people put, put it higher on the rankings. Um, and actually, after seeing it, I think actually really after thinking about Kubrick in general, you know, it's... The fact that it was quite low in the rankings is, is you know, understandable and also it does not discount it from being a great, great film um, because for me, this is actually a masterpiece, um, you know, and when I first saw it, um, instantly that, that's what I thought um, and actually it's grown a little bit more each time um, and, and this is just a stunning film, um, you know, a big enough budget for Kubrick to actually make a, a great, great film um, as well and yes, this film, um, you know, it's basically a highest film, um, you know, it's very, very different of course, um, and it's got, uh, if you compare it to the rest of Kubrick's work, it's not, you know, it's not as good as most of them um, for me, um, you know, and it's not really um, his style that he would, he would kind of, um, really, he would, it would come about um, from Dr. Strange Up onwards, um, you could say hints in Lolita um, and, and Paths of Glory, um, but really, his true style, uh, what I really think of Kubrick, um, came about really Dr. Strange Up, and certainly 2001 onwards, that, you know, that's when, Instantly, you recognise that's a Kubrick film, um, you know, and it's very, very intense in a way that, you know, his early ones aren't. Um, but this film doesn't really have a lot of that. You, you could say maybe the lighting, uh, the use of shadows, is a bit similar to Doctor Strangelove. Um, but yes, this one, it is generally, um, you know, just a, a, a great film that doesn't really feel as much like a Kubrick film, um, but has some of the traits that, you know, discounting the style, you could say. Um, and, you know, what the thing you could say is, well, it is just wonderfully shot, um, very precise, so, you know, that, of course, comes into the style, but not really, um, the actual, the tendencies, um, you know, aren't really here, from, you know, the ones that he would, he would make, um, later on, and, and this film, yes, yeah, Sterling Hayden, um, who, of course, is also in Doctor Strangelove, um, The Godfather as well, people may know him from, and yes, um, he's Johnny Clay, and he's basically the main kind of boss, um, organises this heist, um, which is meant to be in the money organising room, um, kind of, the holding room where in this racetrack, um, you know, and kind of, it, it's meant to be, um, kind of this whole plan goes down, um, which he's mainly in charge of, um, you've got massive, massive, uh, you know, cast really here, um, and, and of course, uh, yeah, just a team that he puts together, um, in order to kind of, he plans to rob, of course, uh, this racetrack, um, and yes, basically, very, very short film, um, you know, a very precise film, um, you know, very atmospheric, very dark at times, um, great humour, um, you know, Kubrick, of course, um, throughout most of his films, um, there's great, great humour in them, um, you could say le less so, you know, the films that don't really focus on this as much, um, Paths of Glory, and probably Spartacus as well, um, but the rest of the films, 
at least have, have some sort of um, you know satire satire element um, or kind of just general comedy um, you know but this one it has got um, you know it has got some in there as well um, but yes it's basically one of the best heist films of all time you know I think um, apart from Reservoir Dogs um, you know in terms of true heist films um, this is the best for me I think when I saw it I was blown away um, just how involving it is you know and kind of how human it is um, and, and just just the moments in the, in the film are very very satisfying for different people um, this will probably be a spoiler review um, so yeah if you've not seen the film check it out um, it is a masterpiece for me um, so yes basically it starts off um, you know mainly with these groups of people um, and the plan gets kind of told um, to us as a viewer and yeah basically um, a very very intricate and precise plan of course there is narration in the film um, I've seen a couple of reviews where that's criticized um, you know and of course Yes, in terms of the sophistication level um, of storytelling, it's not, you know, 2001 or, you know, Clockwork Orange, The Shining or anything, but, um, you know, I think the narration is definitely not pointless um, and it does actually, you know, at times it does include, it does come into the satire elements, um, actually, and kind of just general kind of actually mocking how, how kind of petty the stuff is with them all and how, yeah, it brings the humanity to them, to the characters, um, you know, because these are criminals, of course, um, you know, the less so being... George, um, who, who basically gets walked all over by his partner, um, Sherry, uh, and yeah, basically, um, you know, it does add a lot of this stuff in there. Also, it uh, kind of um, keeps you, um, you know, informed, you could say, uh, on, on the actual, how precise the plan is, even though you don't remember maybe all of the, the stuff that's getting told to you, it, that's the whole point, I think, um, Kubrick's trying to do. It's trying to show how, how precise it all is, and if anything goes wrong, really, um, it'll have ripple effects throughout, you know, the actual, um, the heist itself and for all the characters um, and actually I was uh, you know kind of um, blown away um, you know by the end in this film as well but the characters um, the script which is wonderful co-written by uh, Kubrick and this is a Kubrick Harris production um, you know very very early films um, that he would do with Harris um, and, and yes basically um, this film uh, the characters I absolutely loved I think uh, you know it's such an investing film from the very beginning, um, you, you know, it's just so, so involving in the actual, you could say, the plot, um, but it's just balanced out the characters um, and generally the, the atmosphere and also just the really, really human relationships, um, especially with Sherry and George um, and, of course, Johnny as well. It's very, very, a great character study, um, you know, and kind of, um, of course, um, you know, he, he, you could say at times he, he, he's more of a villain of the film, um, you know, but yes. Basically, um, it's not a heist film where you don't care about the characters. It really is um, a one that brings a humanity to quite a lot of the, th the threads in the film. Um, and also, yes, uh, there's moments where, you know, especially with Tim Carey, um, his character, um, you kind of, you want, you don't want him to kind of, uh, you know, it, to go well for him. And um, there's a really, really uh, wonderful actual scene, um, kind of subplot that goes on actually with Timothy Carey's uh, character. And um, yeah, there's this, uh, this other guy in involved there. And... Um, I won't ruin that actually, then that's a really um, it's kind of satisfying comeuppance you could say, um, watch out for that and yeah, um, but this film um, really has got so many different characters in the film and they all play a part of course in the heist um, and Kubrick wonderfully portrays that, um, you know, you kind of, you get enough time with each, um, roughly each main character um, and kind of how, how the relationships um, compare as well um, and just the type of people that they are, um, so it kind of allows you to, um, you know, kind of come to your own sort of conclusion about who you want to kind of get out of this um you know, get away with kind of thing if, if you must and how how as well the money would change their lives and all this um and who who you, you really want to, to see their comeuppance um of and, and basically i think um you know the, the use of music as well um is really really great especially in the final act um in, in the, the rise of intention um and of course the cinematography um is really really atmospheric um you know it is a noir film of sorts and of course it's a kubrick noir um so Yes, very, very um, unique, um, and of course, it's one of the best heist films. Um, you know, I, I can see how maybe, um, I'm not sure, but Reservoir Dogs could have taken, um, you know, inspiration from this. Um, I do prefer Reservoir Dogs, um, you know, and uh, I think that's the best heist film ever made, um, probably, but this one would probably be second. Um, I think it's absolutely stunning, um, and just really, the, the, you've got a perfect setup, um, you know, you're involved in the plot, um, in, in, in the characters, and just... The whole tone of the film, very, very dark, but also uh, Kubrick's not afraid to kind of um, use satire in there and kind of just, 
yeah, just um, really great comedy and also explore uh, the humanity of it all um, and, and actually just general relationships, um, you know, kind of husband and wife um, in there as well. And yeah, I think the actual horse racing as well is also wonderfully shot. Um, but yes, it's the final um, 40 minutes or so where it really, really um, becomes, you know, it really elevates in, into kind of um, absolutely mind-blowing thriller level, um, I think. It really is um, a stunning film, and uh, you know the actual payoff as well. The first sort, of, the last ten minutes, um, you know, is really, really something else. Um, you know, I think the performances as well, um, you know, in the second half of the film are really, really top notch. Um, Sterling Hayden, you know, he really, by no means is this, you know, one of the most likable characters or anything uh, or relatable characters. Um, but that's not the point. Um, you know, it really is. It's a character that he's one of the most memorable. Um, you know, and um, just a wonderful performance. Um, you know, very, very physical performance um, as well as just, um, you know, he's very, very aggressive and everything. Um, so it kind of plays into that. Um, and yes, just just the comparison as well between him and maybe a character like George, um, who's kind of more innocent um, and kind of a victim, you could say, kind of just drawn into this um, to this crime. And of course, uh, spoilers, um, the actual end in itself, you know, it kind of all comes into play there. Really, no one gets away with this, um, you could say. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a heist film, so... I doubt there'd ever be a heist film where you know everyone gets away with everything uh, and kind of lives happily ever after. Um, you know, it's probably not the point. Um, but yes, you know, I think not, not really anyone make, makes out of this um, alive or, or free. You could say, and um, even other people who are kind of drawn into, um, of course, um, the actual um, heist itself. Um, you know, the kind of the boyfriend of um, Sherry as well, um, who kind of um, is cheating on George with. Um, you know, kind of. He comes into it and even he gets, you know, affected. Um, and the way it culminates, of course, um, I think is absolutely fantastic. Um, and of course, yes, the actual ending, um, what happens to Stone Hayden. Wow, what an ending. Um, you know, it really is uh, it's satisfying, but it's also kind of tragic um, because at least, you know, it's just the fact that no one, they all risked their lives and no one really got away. And, and the ending kind of poetic uh, moment, um, one of the ending parts where, where the money just goes, everywhere you know at the airport um and the kind of again the comedy uh, used in here of course with the dog and, and the old woman um is really really genius um and it's just kind of tension comedy um and the fact that it's just right near the end and even to the very kind of last last couple of shots you're kind of left wondering what's going to happen um and when you see it um for the first time and then you watch it again it kind of becomes more of a kind of a tragedy kind of thing you know how how it all go, all goes wrong um and just as well, you know, just um, this time around, I think even more so, I wanted um, Sterling Hayden's character, you know, Johnny Clay to kind of get what he kind of deserves uh, kind of thing. And, and yes, um, you know, because it's just a really, really satisfying ending, um, but also kind of a, a sad um, ending as well. Um, but the visuals in this film and the way that kind of uh, Kubrick uses um, you know, visuals to tell the story, really something else, um, of course. And already, you know, here you can see he's kind of um, meticulous uh, you know, precise movements um, and just as well the lighting, the, the complex and atmospheric lighting, um, the use of shadows in this film, um, of course, in noir fashion. Um, but yes, really, really something um, striking visuals um, and just just really, really, um, you know, intense, um, visceral. And um, yeah, it really is. It's quite a hard hitting film, you know, and um, there's some great fight scenes in the film, um, you yeah, know, especially with the massive guy, I can't remember his name, um, but. You know, he, he plays a part in, in this kind of, um, this heist. Uh, he's trying to, of course, draw the cops away. Um, and, and that moment, you know, is a great, great fight scene. Um, it really is. Hilarious as well. Um, you know, I just loved the comedy in that fight as well as um, just the way it was put together. How how kind of amazing that is. Um, and yeah, just as well. The way that Kubrick um, uses the kind of, he kind of tells the story at times, you know, in the second half, um, in different perspectives, um, you know, it's just wonderful storytelling. Um, it's a great, great noir film. Um, yes, a stunning film, you know, but is it one of the best, uh, you know, Kubrick films? Um, absolutely not. Um, but really, that's a testament to how great he became, how how genius he really, um, you know, the levels that he, of course, um, reached in cinema um, is almost unsurpassed. Uh, and actually, on one occasion, pretty much unsurpassed, um, you know, in terms of a standalone film, uh, for me, made the greatest film of all time. Um, so yes, I won't reveal what that is yet, but I probably have revealed it at times um, to people on the channel. But this film, you know, it, it, it's nowhere near them sort of films, um, but it is 
a masterpiece and I really don't have any flaws with it. So overall, of course, um, I, I believe this to be, you know, probably the second best highest film of all time um, I've ever seen. Um, so yes, it is a masterpiece um, and it's just so well um, constructed, so precise. Um, you know, it is a shorter film, um, the, sh the shortest Kubrick film, um, you know, and, you know, of his main fe feature films, the 11 of them, um, you know, and it's not, it's not the heights of, um, you know, his best works um, and, and kind of, you know, even even the, the kind of the next few um, films, um, it's not really in many ways as good as that, um, you know, but but really, um, although it may be one of the worst Kubricks, um, you know, it's still an absolute masterpiece. Um, so that kind of gives some hints to kind of how I feel about the filmography of Kubrick overall. Um, this film is a masterpiece and I really have no flaws with it. Um, it doesn't, you know, elevate um, to some of the, the very best films of all time, but it is among them, I think, um, actually, and you know, it's probably, um, as I say, the second best heist film uh, among my favourite thrillers, although, you know, Hitchcock has made at least 10 or so, um, I do prefer to this. Um, yes, but I think um, it is a stunning film. Um, if you've not seen the film, of course, um, well, this is a spoiler review, um, kind of, so yes, but if you haven't seen it, um, highly recommend it, and, um, you know, it's a it's a film that probably is a bit underlooked uh, in his filmography um, because, of course, he's made so many mind-blowing films, um, you know, like 2001 and The Shining, etc. Um, but yes, this is a masterpiece, and I have to give it 100%. Um, I don't think it's quite a plus. Um, you know, it doesn't elevate into the plus tiers. Um, you know, kind of. Of course, 2001 was my first Kubrick review, um, and of course, um, yes, you know, it, it did get a tier S from me. So it's it's. You can see, of course, this is nowhere near, um, you know, even a film that I don't consider his quite his best. Um, I do, I do consider it one of the top, um, you know, four or so. Um, you know, well, actually, it's my third, the third pick for, uh, you know, the best Kubrick film. But you know, I think it's actually my fourth favorite. Um, but even then, that gets a tier S. Um, this one doesn't get a tier, um, you know. But that's not shocking because it is, it is still a masterpiece, um, hundred percent. That's a, you know. I don't need to explain, you know, it's a very, very high score, of course, it's a masterpiece, um, but this film doesn't elevate to, the, you know, the greatest of his films, um, but it is, it, you know, from what I've expe I was expecting, um, you know, I didn't expect it to be, you know, a mind-blowing film, um, but it really is, I think. It's just the fact that his films are so good, um, so many of them, and they're, so, they're so kind of iconic in many, many ways, that this one kind of gets underlooked, um, you know, and kind of, Yes, um, I do think I do think it's one of his worst, at least, um, but it's still a masterpiece. And as I say, would highly recommend it. It's just it's a character-driven, um, but also intricate plot that is always always kind of engaging. Um, you're always aware, visually uh, and kind of through the narration, um, what's going on. It's also a comedy at times, um, but it's very very atmospheric, dark, and kind of um, not afraid to kind of. Um, end in you know maybe cynical ways so anyway thanks for watching uh, my review and of course more Kubrick films um, now to come this is the first film I watched um, this year 2019 so great way to start it um, with my what I consider you know the greatest director of all time um, you know this is not his best film not even near that um, but really that is not criticism um, it's just a case that it kind of shows um, you know this was one of the very first films in general that he made um, and of course he made a couple that weren't really feature films, um, kind of documentaries instead, and uh, little little small films um, before this. So the fact that this is one of his very first actual films that he really um, considered a mature film, um, and the fact that it's one of his worst, but also a masterpiece, um, there's a hint to how I kind of um, you know how, why he is my favourite director and why I consider him the greatest. Um, you know, a true perfectionist. This is meticulous. Um, again, very atmospheric, um, so character driven, uh, and just wonderful visuals but again nowhere near his, his best um he would he would really w reach the kind of um as i say the peak of cinema um and kind of so many um you know masterpieces um in succession at one point you know where he really had had the greatest streak of all time um for me of any director any filmmaker and um this film is a masterpiece and definitely um one of the best um you know films of that year um from what i've seen and, and yes just a great film um a masterpiece Wonderful thriller, um, definitely on my favourite films list, 500, um, not in my top 200, um, but it is a stunning film um, and I'd highly recommend it if you've not seen it. If you have, um, let me know what you think and, and maybe, you know, on these Kubrick series, um, include your ranking of the Kubrick films, um, of course if you've seen them, uh, all of them and yes. Thanks for watching my review.